home. Uh, we're going to start our service right now by singing a song that's so appropriate. It's called Grateful. Grateful for the morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face. Grateful for the feeling. Grateful for the knowing. Grateful for the love that's in this place. Grateful for believing that God is all there is. That God is all there is. Grateful for the morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face. Grateful for the feeling. Grateful for the knowing. Grateful for the love that's in this place. Good morning and welcome, everyone. Uh, thank, thank you so much for joining us, whether you're joining us here live in the sanctuary or via Zoom or Facebook. For those that are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. And now let us join together in prayer. As we welcome this day and feel the beauty and joy and love that God is, expressing through the sunshine and gorgeousness of the day and expressing through the sunshine and gorgeousness of each and every person, even when we're not feeling it. Let that radiance just simply absorb into you, into every cell and fiber of your being, feeling the graciousness of God that truly lights us from within. We just dissolve away any cares and woes and just sit in the luxury of God, the goodness feeling cozy and comfortable, knowing we're in our right, perfect place as we prepare for service here this morning. I know that God is loving each and every person just as we are. We are absolutely perfect in the mind of God. And I just simply know that God is expressing divinely and eloquently in, as, and through each and every person here. And we invite this presence, this God presence, this goodness presence, this elevated consciousness to be a part of our day. Welcome it into our vocabulary, into our actions and thoughts and deeds. And knowing that this is true for me, I know it is true for each and every person here. And I am so grateful for the time we spend together in prayer because prayer is always the answer. And I declare this to be true for me and each and every person. And I simply release this prayer into the universal law of mind, which is already made manifest before requests were made. And together we simply say, Amen.
the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. rise and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, whom art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread, and forgive me my trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you didn't hear that, we're going to sing the Christmas song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose, Yuletide carols being sung by a choir, and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child is going to spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering simple phrase to kids from 1 to 92 although it's been said many times many ways Merry Christmas to Please be seated. We're waiting. Okay, now we get to meditate.
Christmas. I just love this time of year. Sleigh times and gay times, children laugh and sing. Joy rides and toy rides, chapel bells will ring. Everyone's happy, cheer is in the air. Loved ones are riding, and soon we'll be there for Christmas is here. The wind is singing in the trees. He's bringing love and good cheer. And for ever peace, Christmas is here. Wise men foretold this one dress night. Oh, harps of gold we can hear if our hearts. All right. Chimney tops are covered with snow. Santa is coming, we know. He's bringing lots of toys to little girls and little boys and love. He brings the old Christmas is here with love and peace to guide our way. Let's say a special prayer tonight. That Christmas will stay. Karen and Sam. Tops are covered with snow. Let's send Santa is coming with no He's bringing lots of toys to little girls and little boys. And love, he brings the old Christmas is here. special prayer tonight that Christmas will stay for Christmas is here yes Christmas is here oh yes Christmas is Thank you so much. Great, Thank Adam. You. Thank you. Beautiful, buddy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. Well. In case you didn't remember who I was, here I am. Good morning. Ah, I'm going to talk today, my topic is what's love got to do with it. I just thought that was such a good topic, especially just before Christmas, because you know when the service is just before Christmas, 
we endeavor to not give the Christmas message. We really want to save that, at least I do, for Christmas Eve. So what's love got to do with it? You know, the great commandment, what's considered the great commandment in the Bible, is to love God and also to love your neighbor as yourself. Basically, to love one another. Seems pretty, sounds like it should be really easy, right? You know, just, just love everybody. Wow, it is so difficult, isn't it? Oh my God. Now, the truth is, the mystical highest spiritual truth is that love is one. It, it, it is the heart of God. Love is the very heart of God itself. And love, at this highest spiritual level, is a law that has no opposite. So, you know, in my uh, career, I've done lots and lots of memorial services and funerals over the year. I've had the opportunity to be with lots of people before they pass. And, you know, at the end, at the end, when people get really clear, and people are tremendously clear at the end, I want you to know, people are not confused. They are enormously clear about what's important, and what's important at the end of our life is the love. It's what everybody says. Nobody ever says, oh, Dr. Mark, have them increase my morphine. I've got to get back to work. <laughs> you know, nobody ever says that. Nobody wants, you know, wish they did, you know, oh, I wish I took the trash out more often or blah, or whatever they say, you know. It's all about what's important in the final analysis is who we love and who loves us and, that, and the exchange of that energy of, of, of love. That's the important thing. You know, there are no categories of love. It's all love as far as the infinite mind of God goes. So the love you have for your parents or your children or your spouse or your best friend or the neighbors or blah, 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 it's all love. It's not about who loves who, how. See, and we've kind of played that game for a long time. We think it's about who loves who, how. And the fact is, none of that's our business. God just wants us to love everybody. I'm convinced. I'm convinced as we learn to love one another more, we ourselves have a greater capacity and greater opportunities to love. I think we are so loved by God. This is what you've got to get today. If you don't hear anything else, just hear this. You right now are so loved by God, that's, that's why you're here. You know, God doesn't love you because of something that you do or don't do. God, and God doesn't love you because of what you are. You are. You exist because God loves you. Isn't that incredible? So that means that there, there's been no mistakes. You are not a mistake. You know, you're not missing parts or, or you know, didn't get with the instruction manual or anything like that. No, God made you and God doesn't make any junk. God's expressions are all perfect. They are all loved equally. God loves all of God's expressions equally. And so I think this is what I have to remember. See, in our teaching the science of mind, we focus very much on that there is a principal power and presence of God, and it is within us. That's really important. And what Ernest Holmes says in The Science of Mind that I love is that there is an ever-availability of good. Whatever that good is, that good could be your improved health, that good could be a loving relationship, that good could be peace of mind when you make that call this afternoon that you've been avoiding for two weeks. You know, it's a, that good, there is a greater good for all of us. If we are filled with fear, what I find in my own life is that when I'm fearful, I keep love at bay. I keep it, I keep it at a distance. Even though I think, you know, I should, I should let this in. I should move a little closer. I should take a step because they'll probably take a step and it would probably, no, no, no. If we're filled with fear, I find I have kept love at bay again and again and again. But only what we're willing to give can we actually have. So I don't know anybody who says, no, no, I have too much love in my life. I don't need anybody else who loves me. I don't want anybody else's good intentions. I don't want anybody else's well wishes. You know, no, of course not. We never, nobody would ever say that. So this idea, the principle is that only what I'm willing to give is what I'm able to receive. So to simply change our behavior, I think is not enough that we have to go back all the way to the thoughts that actually created the behavior. 
I ask myself, where did I get off track in my thinking about love? That something else was more important, that there was something else that had to be a priority. See, in God, there's, the way I, the way I look at God, God is infinite pie. Yeah, God is infinite pie, and I am very fond of pie. So the idea of infinite pie means, you know, it never runs out. God, in other words, God is infinite good for all, for everybody. God is infinite good for everybody. So in God, there is enough. There is absolutely enough for everyone. In God, I believe that we all have the capacity to create whatever our needs are. We can all learn to work with the spiritual principles in such a way that we can produce what we need for our own life experience. I love that about this teaching. So even if you have thought your whole life, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm not enough, I'm just not up to the task, the truth is, any moment, it, it turns on a dime. You can say, well, you know, I guess I can. I, I believe I can. I, I, I'm certain that I could do this. So when I see you doing good, I have to celebrate that. I mean, really, I do. When I see people doing well in the world, I have to come from the most sincere place within myself of, wow, good for you. Wow, good for them. Oh my God, that's terrific. Why? Because we are all one. And because we're all one, if I deny celebrating your wins, then I'm telling the universal mind that I don't want those wins for myself. If I don't celebrate your happiness and your accomplishment and your good in the world, I'm telling the universe, I don't want that for myself. Now that's crazy because I do want that for myself. And one of the greatest ways to have more of an experience of that for myself is to celebrate the good that's happening for you. I know that sounds completely contrary to what the human mind would think, but that's how it works. What has to go is the belief that I'm separate from you. See, I know it looks like you're over there and I'm over here and, and, and your body and your spirit and your life experience is over there and my body and my spirit and my life experience is over here, but that's not really how it is. We're just using our five senses for that kind of information. The truth is that we are all, all connected. Your good, your success does not diminish me or anyone else. And if I celebrate it, it actually will expand me. So think about that. My life will expand if I can get on the affirmative side of the street and celebrate when good is unfolding in other people's lives. Rather than go to that place of, why, why not me? How come them? Oh my God, you know, the universe doesn't respond to whining. You know, I'm, I'm really, I know this for a fact because I've whined a lot <laughs> over the years and um, I'm embarrassed to say that, but it's the truth and you know, the universe has never responded to my whining. It's like, you know, look, when you're gonna talk to us like an adult, we can have a conversation, but if <laughs> you're just gonna keep going on like that, then we're not gonna make any, any progress at all. So, so what has to go is the belief that I'm separate from you. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, there's that saying, there's the line, thy will be done. Now, I think that's true prayer, to say thy will be done. Now, I can say thy will be done because I really trust that thy's will for me and for you is only good. God's will for us is only, only good. The only reason we would not want to say thy will be done is because we think somehow God's going to do a little bait and switch on us. You know, it's like, well, yeah, it's looking really good for you, but oh, at the last minute I had to give that to somebody else, you know? It's like, no, no. That's, that's not how, how it works. The, thy will is always, always good. So, like, if you want guidance, you know, like, say, well, I wish, I wish God would just show me what to do. I wish Spirit would just tell me what I need to know. Okay, okay, you want that? Be prepared for intuition, because intuition is the voice of God in humankind. So that means you want some guidance, okay, you're going to get intuition. So are you prepared for that? Now the love that we're talking about is infinite. Love for one person does not mean less for another. You know, and, and how I really came to understand this was watching parents with children, watching parents with small children. And you can see how like, oh, they have love 
for all. Those parents have love for each child. It's not like they say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, we ran out of love on number three, you're number four, there's just nothing left for you. That's not how it is, you know, because love has an infinite capacity to grow, an infinite capacity to expand. So love for one person doesn't mean there's ever less for another, right? To, um, I was thinking about this idea of renouncing. And in my head, I had the idea of renouncing as kind of like a sacrifice, um, you know, that I will forego the level. So here's what, I, here's what I've come to understand about renouncing. What I have to renounce is my appetites, which are endless, by the way. My human appetites are absolutely, absolutely endless. And, and if I renounce that, the appetite, then what's able to come forward is I can receive the level of my actual desire, of what's really trying to express by means of me. It's something of a higher order. It's trying to move through me. So I think most people give up what they want most for what they want in the moment. I have certainly been that person. You know, it's like, oh, I really, this is, this is my long-term goal, but right now I want this. You know, my long-term goal is to be in shape, but right now I want chunky monkey. <laughs> yeah, but I really want to be in shape, but that chunky monkey's calling me. It is. It's calling me. I can hear it. In A Course in Miracles, it says, all peace comes from giving, all peace in relationship comes from giving the relationship to God to use for his purposes. That's an interesting idea to me. All peace in relationship comes to giving the relationship to God for his purposes. Hmm. Well, what I have to remember about other people, and this is, I have found to be helpful, is people come into my life and they're in my life for a, you know, a day, a week, a year, a decade, whatever. Um, but those relationships belong to God. Before I got my hands on them, those people belong to God. You know, the people, I, you know, I get a little down about people leaving the earth plane, you know, because a lot of people seem to leave before uh, the end of the year and also at the beginning of the year. It's almost like some people say, you know, I just can't do another Christmas, you know, or the other side is I want to see just one more Christmas. Oh, I couldn't do another New Year's. Nope, I've got to have one more New Year's. You know, we're, we're all just so unique that way. But it's like saying, if I'm saying I'm giving my relationship or a relationship to God, what I'm saying basically is that I'm giving this relationship to love. I want love to be the predominant force in this relationship. See, because all pain comes from using a relationship for your own purposes rather than for God's purposes. Now, I don't know about you, but I have certainly done that in my history, that I have thought this relationship is here for me, you know, about meeting my needs. It's always, you know... It's always okay to pray, open my heart, God, you know, because we're all here to grow. So it seems to me that it's always an appropriate prayer to say, God, help me open my heart here. Uh, because when we do, you know, there is this concept of the mystical third, that you invite, you invoke, you ask, you surrender to a power that's greater than you are, and yet you are a part of it. Now, you are not the whole thing. Like, like when we, when we chant, we chant, I am part of the great mind of God. We don't chant, I am all of the great mind of God. I, that seems just a little arrogant to me, you know, but I am part of the great mind of God means that those things that exist in the infinite mind are true within us. They're here right now. So it's like saying, Holy Spirit, be present in this relationship. Spirit of God, spirit of truth, spirit of love, be present in this relationship. I dedicate this relationship to God, whatever this relationship is supposed to be, which actually is one of the best things I think you can do in a relationship. Because you know when you meet somebody and you think, okay, what's this relationship about? Are we going to be friends? Are we just going to be acquaintances? Is it a birthday card and that's it? What, what's, what's the relationship here? And so, you, know, you don't need to know. We just need to ask that the spirit be present in this relationship. Hmm? So what I see is I have an enormous capacity to want to impose my own will on the world. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I want the world to bend to my will, or at least do it my way. Um, 
And I know that that's what has to be healed in me. You know, thinking that, that I have to impose my will on the world. See, because peace, really, being peaceful comes from putting, being willing to say, you know what, I'm going to put this all in God's hands. Because pain comes from trying to make things be a particular way, right? If I could just make this be a certain way. So what I'm asking is for God to heal me of my need for people to be anything other than they are. Oh my God, that's the work for the rest of my life. I get it. I get it right now. You know, God, heal me of my need for people to be anything other than they are. See, I want to be big enough. I want to have a big enough consciousness to simply allow people, to just allow them. Because, you know, when you allow people, what, comes for, what has permission to come forward is the best that's within them. But, you know, when we're judging them and not approving of them, and, you know, you think, well, I didn't say that out loud. People know. They always, always know. How do they know? There's one mind. We're all connected. So you can talk really, really sweet. You know when people do sweet voice? You know, sweet voice? Like, oh, hi. It's so nice to see you. And you know it's not. Yeah, you know, but just because people do the voice doesn't mean, see, because we all, we all really get that, you know, communication is nonverbal, most of it, you know? So we're releasing people all the time, not out of our life, but releasing them to be who they are, to be their own unique expression of the one, you know? So when I say I'm releasing people, what am I releasing? I'm releasing them to God, you know, to their own highest and greatest good. And yes, absolutely, whatever people are going through, we have to know that God can use that. The source, some of what I have thought of as my biggest mistakes in life have certainly been some of my biggest learnings and my biggest healings, you know? But at the time, I just wanted those experiences to go away. I just wanted to disappear the whole experience. So think of those relationships that didn't work out. Hmm, boy, there was some learning, huh? Yeah, good times. But really, if we're paying attention, we probably really have learned. You know, so to be love is to be a safe space for other people. See, in God, there can be a win for everybody involved, you know? And I think that one of the great gifts that we have to offer other people is to just be a safe space. So what do I mean by that? To just allow people. To you be in that loving place in your mind and just allow people. Don't silently be fixing them. Don't silently be thinking, I'm going to make them a list of 20 little improvements they could make. Or any of that, you know, that conversation. To just allow people to be who they are. It's a tremendous gift because when you think about it, there aren't that many places we go. There aren't that many people in our life who actually just allow us to be us that they don't have some agenda on the inside where they're you know, fixing us or telling us how we need to improve. Face it, God does a better job at being God than we do. You know? I mean, and I've tried being God a lot. And, and I find that God actually does a better job at it than me. So to say God is present in any situation is to say that love is present there. And if you think that you are small or not much, you know, what that does... That's so unfair to who you are as a spiritual being, because if you think you're small, you tell yourself, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm not much, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know what that's going to do? That's going to make you very needy in the world, and that's never very attractive, is it? You know, let's go out and meet some needy people. Yeah, good times, yeah. You, know, you have to recognize that you are the infinite power of God's love, that love that is already within you, right? And so if we go deep enough, I believe if we could go deep, deep enough, so this is not going to be with an outer eye, with an inner eye, if we could go deep enough, we would find that we actually are one another. Now, we have free will. We can think whatever we want, right? But when we think with love, we are thinking from that place of the highest and best within us. And Ernest Holmes says, that is the Christ mind in you. So if you would, turn your attention inward with me for a moment now. Bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. As we consider what's love got to do with all of it. And so as we join together in consciousness this morning, 
bringing our awareness to that principal power and presence of the one, the one perfect love. I speak this word on behalf of all of us and I say boldly, I love God. I love that presence of spirit, the power of spirit, the principle of spirit. I love God for all that God in me does through me and for me. I love the realization that God's grace is our strength, the understanding that God's truth is our power, and the knowledge that God's wisdom is guiding us right now. With minds and hearts wide open today, I speak this word for us that we know right here and now that God within is the source and supply of all good in our life. And that out of an awareness of our oneness with this presence of God within, all good things come forward. And so I speak this word for each and every one of us that anything that's holding us back now as we move into this season of light, any little thing that might hold us back, I speak the word that we let it go that in the name of love, it's dissolved, released, and let go, never to return again. And the way is made clear for us to fully step into the spirit that we are, to be all that God intends for us to be. As we become aware and embrace all that God is within us, the very essence of our being, I speak this word of realization knowing that at the greatest spiritual level, there is only love. And that the Spirit of God in us loves the Spirit of God in other people. And so we include all those people in our prayer now, parents and children, family members and friends, our neighbors, people we work with, acquaintances, people who are just a face but we don't know. And we say God is right where they are. They are surrounded and filled with a spirit of love and creativity and joy and abundance and supply. So we wrap our spiritual arms around all of those people that we hold near and dear. We let our prayer be a blessing energy, an energy of peace and calm and harmony that emanates from us and touches every person on the face of the earth. And we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is healing available for each and every one of us and we welcome it. And so with a full heart, I say thank you God that this is the truth. I release this word and so it is, together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so all right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Yes, you are blessed. Family, family. This next song, we want to do it together because this season, as we come together to love, and it's so warm outside, I think this song is appropriate. <laughs> It's frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, but I bought some corn for popping. The lights are turn way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, 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 snow. It's good night, how I hate going out in the snow. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. snow. Ho, ho, ho. God bless you. Happy holidays. Beautiful. Hey. Diane on uh, sleigh bells. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, Adam, when you sing, you just make my heart happy. And if you would like to make your heart happy, you can take Adam home with you and get his music. Good segue, right? <laughs> And you may get his music at A-E-J-J-A-Y-E dot com. That's A-E-J-A-Y-E dot com. So I welcome you to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. He's got a great Christmas album. I'm sure you do. You. Okay. If you would like to make donations, you may do so by calling the office at 818-762-7566 or simply go to nhcrs.org slash give and text, or text the word give to 818-457-3419. And prayer with a practitioner is available after service here in person or on Zoom. There will be no, pay attention to this part. There will be no Wednesday evening services on December 22nd or 29th. But you may join practitioner Joanne O'Brien on Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. How lovely that will be. For a wonderful Taze service and our very first potluck of the year. Woohoo! Woo Meditation will begin at 6.50 and service at 7 p.m. Our youth church is open on Sundays at, for our 9.45 a.m. service. And I'm sorry, not critters. Youth of all ages are welcome. The 2022 Journey of the Heart pledge forms are available online or in the foyer. Feeding the Homeless, our loving kindness ministry is feeding the homeless today to support this ministry. 
you may go to our website. Yes. <laughs> Volunteers and donations are always welcome. Okay. He made me wear this. You know who. Um, our blanket drive for the homeless is in process right now. We are collecting new and clean used blankets. Thank you, Anne. This one has kitties on it. Um, if you, uh, and blankets are a great gift to give for Christmas, and then you can ask your friends and family for, to wash them and bring them back so you can bring them to church. And um, they will be given to the homeless. You may drop them off in the red bins outside the sanctuary today on the 26th and the January 2nd. Distribution will be on Sunday, January 2nd, and you may contact Gilda Gomez at 818-383-0453 for more information. All New Year's Eve can our New Year's all new, I'll get it right eventually. All new Christmas Eve candlelight service will be Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. Please join us in person, or I'm excited that we can do it on Zoom because I will be out of town and happy to be a part of it that way, or on Facebook Live for our all new Christmas Eve service that will include beautiful readings, singing, and candle lighting. Children will be available, child care will be available. <laughs> We're not giving them out for Christmas. <laughs> Child care will be available in the youth church. We look forward to celebrating with you. New Year's Eve burning bowl service and potluck, yay, the last one of the year, will be Friday, December 31st from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And prepare for 2022 by standing in the strength and power of your dreams. Join Reverend Sidney for a guided and sacred ritual of prayer, meditation, and journaling to release 2021. Anybody else here ready to release 2021? Yeah. <laughs> we made it. Child care will be available at the youth center and after service, we will have our potluck on the patio. So bring your favorite dish to share. And we will be having a goal setting for sheets for 2022. They are available on the patio and on our website to access the um, sheet online, simply follow the instructions. If you get one here at church, please complete it and then put a, self, uh, put a stamp on it and address it to yourself. I just got mine back last week and I forgot I actually mailed it to myself last year and I was so excited, I was so excited to get it. And it really, really worked. If you write your goals down, you're at least 50% more likely to achieve them. And it was just thrilling for me. I was very happy to get that, okay. So, and for 2022, our goal setting workshop will be done by the lovely Rev Reverend Sidney Steen. On January 6th, this workshop will be available live and also on Zoom. It will be Saturday, January 8th, I'm sorry, at, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney in person or on Zoom for this powerful and productive workshop with visioning, visualization, and journaling. You will reveal and clarify your highest intentions and greatest vision for your life in 2022. Sign up on the website today. The cost is a mere $35, a great investment in yourself. Our bookstore will be open for 30 minutes after the service uh, every Sunday. Books are great gifts to give. I'm giving a couple out to my grandchildren this year, and there's lots of little trinkets that work perfectly as little stocking stuffers. Zoom virtual patio is available before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation is every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And please visit our website at nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for our weekly e-blast and monthly newsletters. Okay. Um, please stand and we're going to sing the peace song. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. 
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yay! Yeah.